May God, through the Holy Spirit, enlighten your understanding and give me words which will meet your needs. Pay attention to what we have seen in these past days, especially because this campaign of faith, faith, courage to remove the main cause of people's problems, of all of people's problems, whether it's a financial problem or a health problem or a family problem, a problem in people's love life, whatever the problem might be that the person carries within them, this problem is directly or indirectly connected to grudges, resentment, hard feelings, the lack of forgiveness, lack of forgiveness. And obviously, the, as we speak of unforgiveness, it has to do with pride, which contradicts the word of God. It's a frontal attack. It goes against God. Because Jesus said, blessed are the humble in spirit, which means those who are simple, people who are like children, juvenile, innocent, pure, pure in heart, pure in heart. So, we see that humanity follows, continues to walk towards evil, towards hell, even though they follow religions, they attend evangelical churches. Unfortunately, even the universal church of the kingdom of God, because they carry within themselves a grudge. But this grudge, which is an ally of the devil, a partner of Satan, is connected to the spirit of religiousness. Because if on one hand, the person convinces and accepts their religious way and their religious appearance and they conform, they conform. You know, I go to church, I'm faithful in my tithe, I'm an offering giver, I don't do evil to no one. I, you know, my life before I used to drink, before I was an addict to drugs and I, my family was destroyed. I had this and that. I was, you know, my life was a living hell. My life was pure rubbish, pure rubbish. Today, my life is organized. I'm doing well. Just like the nine lepers, they were healed. Healed from leprosy from an incurable and deadly wound, poisonous one, and obviously that was contagious. So the person was healed, they were blessed. They conquered some blessings, some blessings and many times even many blessings through the faith and courage and boldness upon the word of God. However, however, that person wasn't healed from their main wound. They were not healed from the cancer of the soul, the cancer in the heart, which is grudges, resentment. And that's why Disgracefully, these people come to church 
they sing praises to God. They speak in strange tongues, but not from the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues, but their life is rotten, spiritually speaking. Because they do not want to forgive. They do not want to release forgiveness. And why? Because they were wronged. Something happened and they were wronged. Oh, so and so wronged me. So and so did this and that to me. Oh, come on. So and so preaches the word of God. Many people, unfortunately, might have this feeling against me. Oh, Bishop preaches the word of God, but he is unfair. He was unfair with me. He did something that he shouldn't have done. I recognize that I may have done many things that I shouldn't have done. And I hurt people. I hurt people. But what can I do? Forgive me, all those whom I have hurt. Everyone that I've hurt, I ask for forgiveness publicly. I have no problem. I don't feel any embarrassment to say that I recognize that I failed due to the fact that I was immature, I was childish. I made many mistakes, many mistakes. May God forgive me. But He did. He forgave me. And I know He forgave me because my conscience doesn't hurt. My conscience is at peace. It's pure. Because He forgave me. Because I also forgive those who hurt me. It's the prayer that I say every day. So, many people carry a resentment, a grudge, because of an injustice that someone committed against them, especially inside of the church. However, how many injustices this person themselves have committed towards others? Family members, friends, loved ones, and that's how it is. So, all of us, all of us, with no exception, who live in this world, we are all subject to committing injustices or being wronged. This is going to happen. This is a given. There's no doubt about that because we live in a world of the devil, a ferocious world, wicked, cruel, demonic. And this is the world we live in. That's why Paul even said, for me to die is gain. And it was gain indeed, because to live in this world, this disgraceful world, indeed. Those who are of God have no pleasure in, in it. No pleasure at all. Actually, the Bible says that those who love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. So, whoever is of God hates this world. That's the reality. Because the love of God is in them. And because of this love that is in them, they don't accept anything from this world. Nothing. Zero. Zero. Because this world has nothing to give but disgrace, death, and hell. But the fact is that many people, and we've had several experiences, many experiences with pastors, members, auxiliary pastors, assistants, people in general, who were supposedly, I mean, they say they were wronged and we were the ones who, who wronged them, perhaps through an excessive zeal towards the work of God. Not perhaps, but for sure. We may have failed due to our zeal to, towards the work. And in our zeal for the work, we may have committed an injustice. 
However, we've done so with sincerity to protect the work of God, which is something that God has to, to look after. Anyway, however it may be, these people who were hurt left, they left and then they came back, and they are inside of the churches, but they remain partners of evil. They are still partners of evil, because when a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, they have an evil spirit, a spirit of religiousness, for example. And this spirit of religiousness contaminates those who are around them. Just as when we have the Holy Spirit, we become a fountain of life, which is what Jesus promises in his word. He determined in his word that if we have the Holy Spirit, we would become a fountain. He, the Holy Spirit, becomes inside of us a fountain of life, regardless of the struggles and difficulties and problems that we go through here in this world. But when a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit and they are deceived by an unclean spirit, by a deceiving spirit that speaks in tongues, and they think that they have the Holy Spirit, they believe they have the Holy Spirit, and no one proves them wrong, only the Holy Spirit to convince them, then this person becomes a fountain of evil inside of the church itself, meaning they are allies, partners of Satan, unfortunately. I say this with much sadness and pain. I wish I didn't have to say this, I wish I could only speak about a word of faith and motivation to bless, to bring joy, to satisfy Greeks and Trojans. But I wasn't born for that. I wasn't born to be a politician. I was born to bring the word of truth, the word of sincerity, of, you know, honesty, what God gave me to those who want, those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Indeed, not hunger and thirst for the solution of their problems, not hunger and thirst to conquer this world, the kingdom of this world, but hunger and thirst to conquer the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is taken by force. The person has to go against their own will. They have to violate themselves day after day after day in order to take possession of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus talks about this, and you know it. And not everyone wants to do so. No one wants to sacrifice. Everyone wants to conquer in an in a easy way. Everyone wants to live in this world, conquer the whole world in an easy way. But not even with the devil, not even in the devil's world this is possible. Because even if a person wins the jackpot, a trillion dollars or whatever, they will still be unhappy because they will have no peace. They will have no peace. As long as they depend on good luck, they will be bound to bad luck, to a horrible life that this world has in store to those who love it. The truth is, dear friends, that we have this problem inside of the churches, and we are seeing many people of the church, people that we believed were converted, but they are manifesting now a spirit of religiousness, the spirit of Satan, the spirit of pride that does not want to forgive. But they continue in the church, and they think that because they are in church and they give offerings, they are tithers, God will bless them. And they continue to 
die slowly, they rot inside of the church. And that's the reality, the pure reality, because there's a spirit, this spirit of pride is of the devil, the spirit of pride is from Satan. This was the spirit that manifested in heaven, the pride, the desire to want to be equal to the Almighty. So these people have the same spirit. When this happens, they are not a fountain of life, but a well of perdition, a well of mud and dirt and rubbish, which inside of the churches, the devil through them is able to destroy many other lives and pass on this pride, this arrogance, which is contrary to the word of God, which is contrary, it confronts the Holy Spirit directly. And this is the reason why many people in the church, including the universal church, unfortunately, haven't yet received the Holy Spirit. And we don't understand, my God, we pray, we fast, we do this, we do that. We bend over backwards to lead people to salvation, to receive the Holy Spirit, because only the baptism with the Holy Spirit guarantees you that you are of God, and nothing else. Only the Holy Spirit guarantees us our survival in this world. Only the Holy Spirit is capable of convincing us of our sins and give us the humility to recognize and confess Him. So when we forgive our debtors, it's because God gave us authority to do so. Praise God. It's because God gave us courage to forgive. The spirit of faith, of God, the Holy Spirit, He's the spirit of courage to forgive those who have hurt us. And if the person doesn't have this spirit, they do not forgive. And if they do not forgive, they live a horrible life even though they are in church, even if they are on the altar, being a pastor, a bishop, or the pastor's wife, whoever this person might be, it doesn't matter the title that they hold. This won't resolve anything because if the spirit of pride is within them, they are not able to forgive. There is no chance. That's the reality. However, there are those who are sincere, who are seeking for the truth, and they are ready to surrender, to dive into the truth, even though they may have to suffer humiliation and shame, even if they have to be humiliated, even if they have to be wronged, it doesn't matter. What matters is that their humility comes from the Holy Spirit that gives them power, not only of a faith to conquer the world, but above all, the power of faith to forgive and to be forgiven. Dear friends, my apologies if I am being too frank, if I'm being rude even in my way of speaking, and I recognize that I'm rude sometimes, I am rude, I have thick skin, and praise God for that, because even though I am this rude, there is still something mean to give to people, because the Spirit of the Almighty God is upon me to help those who also want to serve God, who also want to please God, who also want, above all, to preserve their salvation for all eternity. 
and only with the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, that's the reason why, and many others as well, there is a need to receive the Holy Spirit. It's more than urgent. We have more necessity of the Holy Spirit than the air, the oxygen to, to live. Therefore, seek Him. If you have to forgive, forgive. If you have to humble yourself, then do so. If you are going to be wronged, then be it. If you have to suffer, to be penalized, then be it. If you have to suffer, then suffer, but receive the Holy Spirit. Be sincere, be frank, be truthful. Do not keep resentments against anything or anyone. Do not keep anything against anyone inside of you. Read yourself from your sad past. Read yourself from, from everything, above all grudges, resentments, in order for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Now we are seeing, we are noticing the reason why so many people haven't yet received the Holy Spirit, because they keep within themselves the curse, this curse called grudges. This is the greatest curse a person can carry in their life. Did you know that? The greatest curse that a person carries is that resentment, that grudge. Perhaps you've been cursed by your mother, by your father, However, the greatest curse is the resentment that you have towards them. If your parents have cursed you, you have the obligation to say, Oh God, bless my father, forgive my father and my mother, bless them. And you are going to be free from the curse that they put on you. And above all, you will receive the Holy Spirit. But read yourself, read yourself fully. Vomit everything that is inside your soul, your heart. Wash yourself in the blood of Jesus and be cleansed. Be washed, purified in order to receive the spirit of the living God, the spirit of love, the spirit of forgiveness, the spirit of humility. May God bless you all. And let's prepare ourselves for this Sunday, the Sunday of forgiveness. But don't wait until Sunday. Because if you wait until Sunday in order to forgive and you die before that, oh dear friends, you can be certain that your final destination will be bound to hell. And there's nothing else we can say. That's the reality. If you need to forgive, then forgive immediately, right now. Don't even wait to give your next breath. Forgive now, immediately. It's the remedy that heals your soul the wounds of your soul, and above all, it helps you feel the peace that comes from God. Because as long as you keep resentment, there will be no peace in you. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.